In this video, I want to talk about electrical boxes, and we're going to do it right now. As you can see, I'm in the process of remodeling my kitchen. I ended up ripping this whole thing apart down to the studs and putting it back together, and now I'm in the process of hanging cabinets, and I need to put an electrical outlet in this cabinet because that's where the microwave is going, so it needs to plug in somewhere and I'm gonna be installing an old work box. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I use old work boxes all the time, and I figured I'd make a video about it. So here are some examples of electrical boxes. You have a typical single gang old work box that you would use. The way it works is you cut a hole and these tabs tighten up against the drywall to hold the box in place. You don't need to hit a stud with that. This is called a new work box, where these nails go into a stud. You have these tabs right here that you line up so that you know where your drywall thickness is going to be. Run your wires, drywall it, cut around it, and you're all set. You also have round boxes that are old work boxes. Same idea. And this one is the one I'm going to be using. This is an energy saving box. The only difference is it has this foam insulation on the back and a tight seal right here on the front. I'm gonna be using that because I'm installing it on an exterior wall. The typical use for old work boxes is when you're doing remodeling, you already have some drywall here. For instance, this one is for a hallway. I'm putting lights right here. I haven't cut those lights out yet. But this switch, I'm gonna have a switch here, is gonna control those lights. So what I did was I cut the hole for the old work box and I snaked some wires down from the attic so I didn't have to tear apart the drywall. I also used an old work box when I moved my TV and I needed to add an outlet. That is a typical old work scenario. But for new construction or remodels where you have the studs wide open, there are some cases where you might wanna use an old work box. For instance, the light above my vanity, I used an old work box. And the reason I did that there is because I wasn't exactly sure where the vanity was going. If I use an old work box, I just left the wire hanging and then I drywalled it and then I cut the box in directly center above the vanity. And that way I knew I had 16 inches because I have the wire in between two studs. So that is a case where I had studs that I could have attached a box to, but instead I decided to use an old work box so that I can adjust it accordingly. A similar situation to the vanity, I have a sink base going here and up above it is gonna be a pendant light that comes down but you can see I haven't put in a box. I didn't attach it to a stud or anything because I want it to land dead center here. And this way and this way, I'm not too concerned because I am gonna center it with the window, but from front to back, who knows how it's gonna work out with shimming and everything. Uh, just in case I left the wire up in the ceiling and I'm gonna put in an old work box. Now that works for an application like that, but if I was gonna put a light in the center of a room like that, I would put a box in that is either a ceiling fan box or a box that can attach to some structure because you never know what you're gonna do in the future. Or even if you sell the house, if somebody goes to install a ceiling fan on a box like this with these little plastic tabs holding it to the ceiling, they're gonna have an issue. So it's always good to think ahead. I also left a wire in the wall over here for the garbage disposal and dishwasher that I will cut in afterwards. That is kind of the same deal I did with this box, which I'm gonna show you how to install. I could have easily attached a box to a stud in here and then cut around the drywall. And then I would have had to take very precise measurements to cut this cabinet to fit around that box. And this is just a much easier way to do it. Let me show you how. So the first thing is you have to know where your wire is going. In my case, it's already in there, but if you're running a new wire, make sure you are in the right bay. You can see here, 
there's a stud here and a stud here. Don't mind the misses, mistakes happen. So I know that in here, the wire is in this bay. So I have to be between that stud and that stud. So I am gonna put my box tighter to this stud right here, but I wanna be sure I'm far enough away where I don't run into it. So it's gonna be about right here. And there's a couple differences between these boxes as far as marking them out. If I was gonna be using this one, what I like to do is just put it backwards and mark here along the sides and then just cut it a little bigger than that line. You mark here, here, connect those lines and you're all set. But with this box, it's a little different. There's nothing, no holes or anything, but what it does have are these little tiny points right here on each corner which when you push it into something, it creates these little dimples. I'm not sure if it's gonna work on this plywood, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And if not, you can always measure the box and mark it that way. But we're gonna try the dimple method. So I'm gonna take this box and I'm gonna hold it away from that stud. I'm gonna put it right about here and I'm gonna see if the dimples work on this plywood. Just press it like this. This would definitely work on drywall. Oh, look at that. You can see them. It's a little tricky to see, but if you get close, you can see them right there and right there. So now you just have to connect the dots. I just use a straight edge to connect those, but I'm just gonna use a box. And when I line this up like this, I can tell that that's gonna be a little tight. So I'm gonna go on the other side of the line when I cut it. It has some play right here, so I'm not worried about the box just falling in to the wall. But another thing to consider here is if you have, let's say, two layers of drywall on the back side of this when you're doing whatever it is you're doing, and then you have a cabinet, this only goes so far. So you might run into an issue if you have a bunch of layers of stuff to tighten down to because these tabs have to catch on the back side of it. So keep that in mind. So when before you hang your cabinet, you can cut a bigger hole and then you can cut the smaller hole and then this will just attach to the cabinet and not all the material on the back side. If it's over an inch, I should be good. Woo, inch and an eighth. There is something that you can do. Let's say you hung your cabinet and you forgot to cut that hole and I'll show you what you can do after I cut this up. Something else to consider with a box like this, specifically if it's a microwave, make sure you're not gonna cause an obstruction for anything. So a lot of times people will cut the cabinet up here for a microwave and run a vent straight up. In my case, I'm going out of the wall like this. If I was to bring that vent up, this would probably be in the way. So you just wanna be mindful of all that. And of course, for this, I am going to use my favorite tool ever, an oscillating tool. If you don't have one of these, just make sure you put this box in a location where you can get whatever tool you're using in there. You can pre-drill each corner and then use a jigsaw or whatever you want to do. But this thing is the best. It makes things very easy. So now that I have this open, I realize this is a situation where I'm not gonna have enough of a tab to attach. I might be able to sneak it past here, but I'll show you what to do. I'm gonna cut straight through here, through the drywall. So hopefully 
I put this wire in a location where I can grab it. I can feel it attached to the stud right there. I'm gonna have to cut some of this insulation out. I already cut the vapor barrier with my oscillating tool. Kind of pull some of this out. You should wear gloves if you're dealing with insulation. Probably a good idea. I feel the wire. Plenty of wire. It worked. So this is a situation where the cabinet is away from the drywall and that is more than one inch by the looks of it. So what I can try and do is either sneak the tab in between and just attach it to the back of the cabinet or I can take a screwdriver or something like, a, like that oscillating tool, I might be able to angle it enough to cut some of this drywall out of here um, so that those tabs actually function. But I'm gonna see if I can sneak it in between here. Okay. Trim this wire, gave myself plenty. And then you just feed the wire into one of these openings. Bend it as you put it in the box. Okay. Now, make sure the box fits. I'm going to try and get those tabs in between that opening. Yep. That's going to work. Make this easier. And use a screw gun. Feel it pulling in. So I know those tabs are tightening. There you go. Box is installed. Might as well hook up the outlet while I'm up here. All set, ready for the microwave. Well, I should probably put my base cabinets in first. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you already knew this. I'm not an electrician. I'm a DIYer, so electricians out there, let me know. Do you have a difference of opinion? Leave it in the comments below. And stay tuned for more videos on this kitchen and lots of other stuff, like this or this. Click those videos and check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.